Hello, good day. Welcome to the new year and new term. I'm glad to be your module convener for IC201 Corporate Finance. This is the first video on the Corporate Finance series. Together, through online learning, I hope we will have interesting and fulfilling time going forward. Despite the fact that we are still separated by distance due to the COVID pandemic, Public corporations generally has a separation of ownership and control. The owners, the shareholder, cannot control what the managers do, except indirectly through the board of directors. This separation is necessary, but also dangerous. It is important to understand the potential problems that may arise when the management of the corporation and ownership are separated. I hope this video will give you a good understanding of how agency theory can be used to analyze the relationship between shareholders and managers and of ways in which agency problems may be overcome. Stay tuned. Let's learn together. An understanding of agency theory is the first step to good systems of governance. A good corporate governance ensures that shareholders' objectives are close to the manager's heart. This includes a well-designed incentive for managers, standard for accounting and disclosure to investors, requirements for board of directors, as well as legal sanctions for self-dealing by management. An agent principal relationship exists whenever someone, the principal, hires another, the agent, to represent his or her interests. A company can be viewed as a set of contracts between the firm and shareholders. The relationship between shareholders and management is an agency relationship. On that note, the shareholders are the principals. The managers are their agents. Jensen and Macklin were the first to develop a comprehensive theory of firm under agency arrangements in 1976. I would strongly encourage you to read the original paper to learn about the agency theory. Agency problem is a conflict of interest between the principal and the agent. The agency problem is said to occur when managers make decisions that are not consistent with the objective of shareholder wealth maximization. Why do agency problems exist? What has contributed to agency problem? Watson and Haidt highlight three reasons. First, there is a separation of ownership and control, whereby those who own the company, the shareholders, do not manage it, but appoint agents, the managers, to run the company on their behalf. The ownership of most large companies is widely spread, while the day-to-day -day control of the business rests in the hands of a few managers who actually own a relatively small proportion of the total shares issue. Second, the goals of the managers, the agents, differ from those of the shareholders, the principals. Human nature being what it is, managers are likely to maximize their own wealth. Managers are also concerned with their personal wealth, job security, and fringe benefits. Such concerns may cause managers to make decisions that are not consistent with shareholders' wealth maximization. Third, asymmetry of information exists between agent and principal. Managers run the company on a day-to-day -day basis and consequently have access to management accounting data and financial reports whereas shareholders receive only annual reports. To conclude, conflict between shareholders and managers' objectives 
create agency problem. Let's look into some examples of agency problems. Managers may be tempted to buy sumptuous corporate jets or to schedule business meetings at Tony Resorts. Financial managers may be reluctant or unwilling to take more than moderate risks if they perceive that taking too much risk might jeopardize their job and reduce their personal wealth. Managers may work just to maximize their own bonus and focus on short-term performance measure. It is sometimes argued that left to themselves, managers would tend to maximize the amount of resources over which they have control, or more generally, corporate power or wealth. This goal could lead to an overemphasis on corporate size and growth. For example, Sometimes management are accused of overpaying to acquire another company just to increase the business size or to demonstrate corporate power. Obviously, if overpayment does take place, such a purchase does not benefit the shareholders of the purchasing company. After having an idea about agency problem, I'm going to introduce the concept of agency cost to you. In general, an agency cost is the cost of a conflict of interest between the shareholder and the management. Agency costs are the difference between the return expected from an efficient agency contract and the actual return. Given that managers may act more in their own interest than the interests of shareholders. Agency costs can be direct or indirect. Direct agency costs come in two forms. The first type is a corporate expenditure that benefits management but costs the shareholders. For example, the purchase of a luxurious and unneeded corporate jet. The second type of direct agency cost is an expense that comes from the need to monitor management actions. For example, paying outside auditors to assess the accuracy of financial statement information. An indirect agency cost is related to a loss of opportunity. For example, risk avoidance by managers. Management may shy away from attractive but risky projects because they worry more about the safety of their jobs than about maximizing shareholder value. Agency problem can be further classified as type 1 and type 2 problem. The type 1 problem happens between managers and dispersed shareholders. The type 2 problem is between blockholders and minority shareholders. The relationship between shareholders and management is called a type 1 agency relationship. Such a relationship exists whenever someone, the principal, hires another the agent to represent his or her interests. There is a possibility of a conflict of interest between the principal and the agent. The relationship between a dominant or controlling shareholders and other shareholders who have a small proportional ownership stake is known as a type 2 agency relationship. Such a relationship exists whenever a company has a concentrated ownership structure, which is common in many countries. When an investor owns a large percentage of a company's shares, they have the ability to remove or install a board of directors through their voting power. This means that indirectly, they can make the firm's objectives align to their own personal objectives. 
which may not be the same as that of other shareholders with a smaller proportional stake. Let's have a quick quiz to test your understanding. A dominant shareholder benefits from having one of her firms trading at advantageous prices with another firm she owns, which is a related party transaction. Is this a type 1 or type 2 agency problem? The answer is type 2 agency problem because the shareholder is a dominant or major shareholder. Let's have another quiz. A controlling shareholder needs cash for an investment in company A. He takes the cash from company B through an extraordinary dividend. This will obviously not be in the interest of company B's other shareholders. Is this a type 1 or type 2 agency problem? Again, the answer is type 2 agency problem. To attempt to deal with agency problems, various incentives and controls have been recommended. Incentives include stock options, bonuses, perquisites, perks, such as company automobiles and expensive offices. Incentives frequently take the form of bonuses tied to profits and share options as part of a remuneration package scheme. Executive compensation schemes are useful mechanisms for retaining able managers and encouraging them to pursue goals that promote shareholders' value. Another way of attempting to minimize the agency problem is by setting up and monitoring managers' behavior. Examples of this include audited accounts of the company, management audits, additional reporting requirements, restrictive convenience imposed by lenders, such as ceilings on the dividend payable on the maximum borrowings. Finally, we have come to the end of this video. I hope you have benefited from the presentation and content in this video. If you like this video, please click like, subscribe or share. Thank you, see you and goodbye.